Okay. Okay. What a way to start. Good. All right. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this week, as you probably already know, we are talking about the Mark V by GetRC. And I actually had no idea this drone was coming. Uh, GetRC did ask me to review it a few weeks ago, but I'm pretty sure I said no because I didn't think I'd have time to do a review. But I'm really happy they sent it because honestly, I have barely left my house for the past few weeks. Uh, partially due to being really sick, then extremely cold temperatures in Ontario, provincial lockdowns, and finally being snowed in for a few days. So when this arrived today, I was pretty excited to have a reason to go out. Also, if you've seen any of my last reviews, you'll know that I've been a huge fan of GEPRC's most recent drones. So when this one came out, I was genuinely excited to try it as well. And I'll tell you right now, it definitely didn't disappoint. The Mark V is GEPRC's newest flagship five inch drone. And that specifically refers to the diameter of the propellers, but generally it refers to this standard size of FPV drone that is typically used for freestyle and cinematic flying with a GoPro. It's a bind and fly quad, meaning it's completely pre-built and all you have to do is link it to a controller to get it up in the air. And like most popular drones these days, you can buy it in both analog and digital. And it also comes with two versions for 4S batteries and 6S batteries. When you first look at it, the Mark V definitely seems to have a pretty familiar design. The frame has a pretty common form factor, and with these yellow tips at the end, it honestly gives me similar vibes to the Nazgul 5 V2, but it still does have some pretty unique features. One of the first things that caught my attention are these aluminum plates at the front. In their promo photos, GEPRC says that these are designed to provide extra protection to your camera during heavy impacts, and honestly, this seems like a great idea. I've crashed a lot with my other drones that use the typical standoffs up front, and standoffs do sometimes bend out of place. Luckily, I haven't had any big impacts with this drone yet, but I can definitely see these working a little bit better. And a reason why you might want that extra protection on this drone is because the Mark V HD, which is this one here, actually comes with the original DJI camera, which recently hasn't always been easy to find, and I think a lot of people would agree has the best quality video out of all the current digital cameras out there right now. So that's a really nice touch. Another cool thing about these aluminum plates is they also create a pretty unique setup for your camera mount. And the Mark V actually comes with four different camera mounts that you can easily swap out. There's your standard mount for GoPros, one for smaller cameras and naked GoPros, and then two variations of a foam mount. I typically use the standard GoPro mount along with a plastic cover for my camera when I'm flying freestyle since I feel like this provides the most protection. Then I tend to use foam mounts for cinematic stuff because the soft foam adds a shock absorbing layer under your camera that helps prevent the vibrations from your drone from showing up in your footage. To install the foam mounts, I would first squeeze around the foam a little bit. This seems to soften up the material, which I'd like to believe makes it work a little bit better. But the next step would be to attach the extra plate that is provided and then use some double-sided tape to mount the foam on top. Then you can use one of the longer battery straps that come with the quad and feed it through the gap between the two plates and this will be used to secure your camera in place. Everyone's gonna have a different preferred camera setup so I think the fact that they provide you with all these options is really nice and it's something that I've never seen another company do before. Finally, one more unique feature on the Mark V is its built-in Bluetooth. This means you can wirelessly connect it to your phone and make changes to your drone settings and parameters on the go. All you have to do is power up the drone and connect it to the SpeedyB app, which is available for both Android and iPhone. And I'll leave a link to it down below. Wireless connectivity may be extremely common on photography drones like DJI's Mavics, but it's actually really rare to find on an FPV drone. But I think it's great. It takes away the need to bring a cable or adapter with you wherever you're going, uh, which is one less thing to think about. Overall, besides those key features, I think the general design of the Mark V is very clean and simple, and you can tell that they put a lot of attention to detail. But the thing that matters the most is its performance. 
And, well, what can I say? There's really nothing I can criticize. The tune is right on par with some of the best bind and fly drones I've flown to date, and based on the recent track record, I wouldn't expect any less from GetBarC. I did take a few random notes though. First, like most quads with an X-shaped frame, you will see the propellers in the camera a bit, so keep that in mind if that's something that bothers you. This is totally normal for this frame shape, and it shouldn't affect your GoPro footage unless your camera angle is really, really low. Next, when it comes to controller sensitivity or rates, they are definitely set up to be more snappy and quick, making it a great freestyle setup straight out of the box. If I was buying this drone for cinematic purposes, I would definitely lower the sensitivity a little bit just to give me more precision. Also, if you're starting out and wanna make it easier to control, don't worry, these parameters are really easy to adjust yourself and there's tons of videos on how to do this. Finally, when it comes to flight time, unfortunately, it's extremely cold here right now, which has been brutal for my batteries. In these temperatures, I'd say that they drained after about three minutes of flying, but this wouldn't be a fair representation of the drone's capabilities at all. On their website, GetBarC says they should be able to get six to eight minutes, and that'll depend on how aggressively you fly. I think six minutes is a very believable estimate though. Anyways, sorry for the rather basic flights. My fingers were practically frozen, and I really wanted to avoid losing the quad in deep snow. Uh, I absolutely loved flying it though, and I can't wait to put my own rates on it. I will definitely be keeping it around. So I think there's one more thing worth mentioning, and that is how it compares to other drones on the market. And in my opinion, I think its closest competitor is gonna be the Nazgul Evoke. So here's what I think about that. First, when it comes to performance, I would say that they are both equally fantastic, and I honestly can't find a flaw with either one. When it comes to pre-built, mass-produced drones, both are top-tier products. When it comes to the unique features that each one has, well, that'll come down to personal preference. On one hand, I'm seeing more and more filmmakers taking their FPV drones into extreme weather conditions, and if you're one of those people, maybe you'll prefer the enclosed frame of the Evoque. On the other hand, if you're more into freestyle, I do think that having the open sides of the Mark V can be useful as well. It makes the quad way easier to work on, fix and upgrade, and would also provide better airflow. Also, I'll admit that even though I tried really hard not to, I did end up burying this guy in the snow today. And I just unplugged the battery, let it dry out, and it seems to still work. So even though this doesn't have the protective cover, uh, it can still take a beating. Also, when it comes to the Mark V, I do think that having the Bluetooth feature can be very useful, especially if you're starting out and you wanna experiment a lot with your drone settings. The Nazgul Evoke, on the other hand, does come with the option of getting a GPS module, which could be critical if you wanna fly long range. So it is up to your personal preferences. But there is one thing that I do have to admit that iFlight did better, and that is accessibility and ease of use for those of you who are just starting out. With the Mark V, you really don't get any guidance on how to set this guy up. There's no directions on which way the propellers go, how to install the foam mounts, how to connect to a controller. There's no warnings, labels, or anything. And although all of this is common sense for an experienced pilot, I know there's a lot of you guys out there who wanna get started and would have no idea what to do. So GetRC, I love you guys, but you really have to start putting in a little bit more effort into this. Uh, even just for the sake of safety. It's not just GepRC, this is a large majority of all FPV companies. Finally, to finish off my comparison, the price of both of these drones is also pretty similar, and I'll put all of that up on the screen for you. But as you can see, you're clearly paying high-end prices, but you are getting a top-tier product. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe and do all that fun stuff, but even if you don't, I appreciate all you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.